you jib a jab, bamboos on new canoes on pippity pop she called. You jib a jab, bamboos on new canoes on pippity pop she called. I mean, you keep on talking, but you don't know where to turn it off. Welcome to the weekend. I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute. You're watching Independent Thinking. Well, as you know, I'm a big, big fan of RTD. I was uh, sentenced to the board of directors. Oh, God. When was that? 1994 for a four-year sentence, at which point RTD tried to pass a massive tax increase back in 1997 for light rail. It failed. They came back seven years later. It passed. They said it was going to cost about $4 billion or so. dollars. We at the Independence Institute put out a report and said, no, it's going to cost maybe double that. And guess who was right? But nobody listened back then. But to talk about it and some of RTD's promises going back to the early 1970s, I want to welcome Chuck Bunkett from the editorial board of the Denver Post. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. And you weren't around back in 1973 no. when we first voted on <laughs> RTD. I was. I wasn't old enough to vote. And Kathleen Osier from the Transit Alliance. What is the Transit Alliance? The Transit Alliance is a regional coalition, and we're really dedicated to creating a balanced transportation system. And we think transit is a necessary piece to that puzzle, and uh, with the Fast Tracks program that that really contributes to your delivering that transit. So we uh, actually have uh, support from the public sector, from the private sector, and then other advocacy groups around the region. It's the and public so sector I'm curious about because when I was on the board, governments would give money to Transit Alliance and then Transit Alliance would push for, for things such as RTD's tax increases. Is it still working that way? Well, actually, the funding that we receive is focused on education. And what we found is that there are the vast majority of voters, 83% is the latest number that I've run across, support transit. And what we found is that they didn't always have the tools or some of the facts and figures that allowed them to go out and talk about transit with their friends and families. The point so being we that focus that on that education that piece. That area governments give you money and then you they, go off they and do educate. Well, they do support the, uh, the organization and it is true education, minus the quotes. Minus quotes, especially during election time. I remember Transit Alliance doing lots of good education with finger quotes. Anyway, I want to go back in time to when I was just a wee lad here in Colorado. RTD was a young upstart uh, transportation uh, government. It was actually kind of started back in the old FT, uh, this was before uh, the, F the Federal Transportation Administration, but during the Great Society, LBJ brought forward this idea that we need to save these dying bus companies, and the Denver Tramway Corporation, which ran buses, was dying, and RTD was created as as a government, and in 1973, they, they they asked us for a whole lot of money, and they made some promises which sounded pretty damn familiar from RTD. And it bothers me that so many people, I don't know where you were in 1970, oh, you weren't even born in 1973. You were, were at least 20 years old back in 1973. <laughs> so uh, I think I was also a young lad in 1973. <laughs> I don't know, you're getting pretty gray around the temples there, <laughs> my friend. Anyway, we forget some of these promises that were made. So at the Independence Institute, we put together a little web video. I want to show it now to show what happened back then, what was promised, and what was promised back in 2004. I tell you what, why don't we go ahead and look at this. Pardon the quality, it was made for the web. I'd you can look at to it on our web page as well. Let's have a little fun and go back to memory lane. Imagine buying a car, but they don't deliver it to you. Imagine you pay for it again, and they still don't give it to you. You'd probably call the police. Well, in essence, that's what RTD has been doing to us for years standing in this empty field. Why? Because I should be standing on test track for rail. Back in 1973, RTD promised that if we said yes to a billion dollar tax increase, we'd get track, lots and lots of track, almost 100 miles of it. It would connect all of Metro Denver. In fact, by 1983, we were promised, it would be completed and paid for. What do we have instead? This empty field in Broomfield. In fact, by 1983, we were supposed to have tracks built to here, 6th and Kipling. It's where the Federal Center is. What do we have instead? Good old-fashioned bus stop. We're standing at 13th and Kipling. There's a gorgeous new bridge that RTD just built here. It's part of the 2004 promise called Fast Tracks. You might recall, Fast Tracks was going to cost us about 
five billion dollars worth of new taxes. About the same amount as the last empty promise. But this time, instead of 100 miles of track, we were going to get 240. What have we got so far? Well, we got a pretty bridge. Not much else. And it's been five years now. The folks here at I-25 and 104th were promised tracks back in 1973. They were promised tracks again back in 2004. That's two different tax increases. They've been paying for 36 years, and like so much of the metro area, received nothing. Now, if you bought something and it wasn't delivered, you bought it again and it wasn't delivered, likely you'd go to the police. RTD is going to go to the ballot box. The question is, are we going to pay three times for the exact same project? I hope not. All right, other than needing to go on a diet, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about that 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 clip. You know, governments promise things that aren't delivered. Back in 1973, the region the young regional transportation district said, "Buy this." and gave us our first half cent sales tax. And we voted for it. We voted for it on the promise of 104 miles worth of rail. They called it PRT, Personal Rapid Transit. I loved the 70s brochure, a nice, oh, everything looked so nice and modern. We were gonna build it in eight years, we were gonna lower the taxes, and then it would be self-sufficient. What happened? Well, really, Personal Rapid Transit was an experiment at the time, so I think the, the first system and the only one that was ever built in the world was finished two years later, so I think that experiment failed with Personal Rapid Transit system. But what RTD did promise was a mass transit system. I think we, unlike many other regions across the country, really understand that having a regional system is what works. And they built up over those subsequent years using that investment from taxpayers to build a wonderful transit system through our bus network. And it was really important to understand that we needed a regional system. You know, a lot of other cities, they have these little smaller transit agencies that operate in a certain city, uh, but don't necessarily weave together well. We're at a huge advantage having a mass transit system that covers the entire region. It's true. And let me, let me give RTD some kudos for a great regional bus service. We have uh, among some of the best cities bus services ever, and that's because it's rubber tires. The Boulder to Denver run arguably is one of the most successful transit runs in the country. It carries a lot of people. It does so at a, at a pretty good rate. It's still losing. You know, RTD is 90% subsidized when you put capital and operations together. But nonetheless, that's a good system. We've got a good regional bus system. The point being, the promise was made, and people forget because it was 35 years ago. We forget that we were going to have a hundred miles of track. We forgot that it was going to be paid for and built in 10 years. We forgot that the tax was going to go down from half a cent to about three tenths of a cent, maybe even a, a, a less than that, after the original investment was paid for. We forgot that RTD owned 95 acres of land at I, uh, US 36 and Wadsworth to build the, tres, the, uh, the uh, uh, test track. That's still largely an empty field at this point. Why is it that we forget these things? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe there was, I wasn't here around back in that time, but I don't think the situation that you're talking about now where in the next couple of years, voters are going to be asked again, apparently, to double the size of the sales tax to expand fast tracks, you're going to run into that same problem. I think memories are going to be pretty f fresh, and probably you're going to face a certain amount of discontent. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree that, you know, how come the projections were so off? Like you said, it was going to cost what, 4.6 billion, and it's turned out to be 7.6, 7.8. Um, so that, that scenario <laughs> in years past is not going to be what we see this time around. 